walk-in freezer wiring. Okay, this is our walk-in box. This is our evaporator coil. This is our line set up to our condensing unit. This is our liquid line solenoid valve, our A421 electric thermostat, and this is our breaker panel at the building. In an ideal world, we'll take a breaker up to our disconnect for our condensing unit, uh, three phase, 208, 230, three phase in this scenario. Let's say the building has three phase power. We want to use three phase power for energy consumption. Here's our evaporator coil in our walk-in box. We'll have a, a two pole breaker in the panel and we'll have 208, 230 single phase circuit. Usually comes over to a disconnect to our defrost timer. 81 4520 defrost timer. It's usually the most standard in this situation. And that's where we're going to start. Okay, it's really crude drawings here. So from our breaker panel to our defrost timer, this is the 81 4520 defrost clock. You're going to fire off one and in. And that's 208 volts right there. Boom. Or 230, depending on what um, your power company supplies. Between one and in. That's where it starts. The most basic. Right at your defrost timer. Now, sometimes the defrost timer will be mounted at the walk-in box. I've seen them mounted on top of the walk-in boxes. I found them up at the condensing units. Okay? But we're just going over the basic wiring for this. So we're going to start right here at this defrost timer coming from the breaker panel. That's where it starts. And everything for below here is going to come through this defrost timer. Okay, from your defrost timer usually run a conduit to your evaporator coil and on the side of this evaporator coil is going to be a terminal block and some other controls in there so let's take a look at that so so far we got 208 volts to go to one and n on our defrost type coming out of the breaker panel we got our circuit we're heating up one and n this is our evaporator coil that's our fans we got our terminal block Inside here, you'll have your three wire clicks on, we call it, or your fan delay defrost termination switch. And you'll have your two wire heater safety. And they're usually screwed in on the side, um, and the return bends will be over in here. Okay, so I've added in on our three wire fan delay defrost termination some temperatures and our heater safety usually opens at 90 degrees, closes at 40 degrees. So from our defrost time, uh, time clock to our evaporator, half of the 208 volts is going to go to N. N is also going to go on our red wire, on our three wire clicks on, or our fan delay. That's how we're heating up this switch. Half of this switch is gonna go, let's just go ahead and fill it in. This is the brown wire. On our clicks on. And it's gonna go to terminal X. So then brown, this brown wire here, the X wire, is gonna land on our terminal block X. And then it goes back to our time clock to the X terminal on our time clock. So if this, if inside the box gets to 55 degrees, these are gonna make, we're gonna send power from our breaker from N on our red wire back up to X. And there's a solenoid valve in our time clock here. We'll just draw it like this. I'll make it like a little switch. It gets power, it energizes, it makes, and it takes this time clock from defrost. On the back of this time clock is a set of deals. When we're in defrost, these will be make, these will touch. And when we come out of defrost, then it'll go back to four into refrigeration. And then this will switch over to here, to four. Okay, so we just took you through X. 
X would energize the solenoid. We would drop out from defrost into cooling. So we'll get into where number three goes. So we'll just call this defrost and we'll call number four cooling. Just making it layman's terms. Defrost, cooling. All right, so number three, the number three wire, it comes down and it goes to number three on our terminal block at our evaporator coil. Bring, bring, bring. Three, just to the terminal block right now. Three is coming off this half of the 208 volts. So to complete a circuit, you need this and this to get 208. Right now we're only 110 volts. So in defrost, we go to three. And in cooling, we'd go to four. And the contact switch like this at your defrost timer, okay? So now three is gonna come out here from the terminal block to half of this heater safety. It's gonna come over to your defrost heaters. We'll just draw the defrost heaters like that. They're in the back of this coil and in the drain pan. The other half of the defrost, the other half of the defrost heaters are going to come back on this terminal block inside the evaporator coil and go to N to finish the circuit. So it's three. So it comes from from the breaker panel to one, up to three. When it when the time clock goes in the defrost, the switch is to three. Comes down, hits our terminal block. Comes on around through our heater safety to our defrost heaters and then back on around to N to complete the circuit for 230 volts. Now, if something fails and it gets too hot in the coil and it gets to 90 degrees, this heater safety is gonna open. Take the heaters out of the line and protect our system. This doesn't reclose back to cold until we get to 40 degrees, okay? Okay, now when we call for cooling, one is going to go to four. Four is going to come down to the terminal block number four inside the evaporator. Number four gets exciting. So number four is going to come out. Let's draw it down here. It's all inside here. Four is going to pick up half of all your evaporator fans. So if you got a two fanner or a three fanner, Four is picking up half of all your evaporator fans for starters. It's also, let's go up here and make our, our defrost clock, our A421, pardon me, thermostat, A421 thermostat. We got our dry set of contacts down here. We got common, we got normally open. Up here you need two, you got, uh, Usually it says like 240 volts, 120 volts in common to power it off. And then these are your dry contacts. And you also have normally closed. Four is also going to come up here and power off your common on your dry contacts. For your thermostat. Okay. So four, we get a call for cooling. We get half of our evaporator fans. And we get common. The other half of your evaporator fans come up here to our fan delay. And that's how we complete that circuit. When the box drops to 35 degrees, this makes over to here on your three wire clicks on and you get your other half of your evaporator fans. So when you go in the defrost and this switch is over, we're gonna pump down because we take off the common for our thermostat and we also lose half of our evaporator fans. Pretty simple. As you can see, my drawing starting to look like spaghetti. All this spaghetti gets shoved inside the evaporator coil right here. And that's what makes freezers so much fun to work on. Okay, let's get up to our thermostat. Now our thermostat is also going to take, however you wire it, whether your conduit comes from here or from up here, you're going to get your 208 volts to fire off your thermostat. And you go one and N. That powers off your stat so that your stat works. This comes off your dry contacts, so your solenoid valve will switch leg off a of defrost. You get a call for cooling, it comes off normally open and goes to your solenoid valve. We'll say this is our solenoid valve, and the other half of this solenoid valve goes back to N to complete the 240 volt circuit. 
So we're thermostats powered up. Our solenoid valve is getting switched through our thermostat right here. We go in the defrost, we lose this leg, Bring that turns off, our fans turn off, and our heaters energize because this goes to three and now our heaters are energized for defrost. And that's pretty much everything down below in funky monkey layman's terms. And all that spaghetti is shoved inside the side of your evaporator coil and you guys love it. Call, he got to diagnose before he gets to the dough cause he's a super tech. Yeah, super tech. Yeah, he's a super tech. Gets his jobs done before four. Yeah, he's a